Hey everybody, welcome to, welcome back to our Speed Shop. So we're going to take a look at the Camaro and see if we can find where it's leaking. I checked everywhere except for the evaporator core. So we're gonna turn to that and see if we can figure out where it's uh, leaking from and maybe perhaps replace the evaporator core on this thing. So let's get into it. All right, so getting to the evaporator core is going to be, uh, you know, needless to say, a fun operation here. Because this is it right here. This, see these tubes coming out of that box in there? That's actually the evaporator core in there. So we have to get all this stuff out of the way. And, uh, yeah, so it's going to be fun to get that out of there. I think the box separates or uh, splits in half. I don't remember. But we're going to get into that the further we get into the video. This is what the evaporator core looks like. And this is a picture off of Rock Auto. Right, so the main thing you gotta do here is get all this stuff out of the way, the ECU, and we'll see once we get that out of the way that there is about, I don't know, there's a few, like up to about six, I think, of these 5.5 headed, 5.5 uh, millimeter headed bolts or screws. And I think that separates. We're gonna find out together. I'm not sure, I, it's like I said, it's been a while. But first things first, let's disconnect the battery. So I'll probably end up unplugging the computer to make it easier to get out and to move everything out of there. Because if it's unplugged, then we can move it further out of the way. And I don't know if we're going to have to disconnect it from the inside of the car yet, but we'll get to that when the time comes. But first things first, disconnect the battery. All right, battery's done. Let's get that computer out of the way. Two 10 millimeter headed screws. We'll go ahead and unplug these uh, plugs right here too so we can push everything that way. And these ones all disconnected from the main harness of the car. So now that's all separate. And we should be able to pull this up and out of the way. And there you go. So that's up and out of the way now. Like I said, there's this one plug that goes down through the uh, firewall down here. But I'm going to disconnect this. It's got one hanger right here. And hopefully we can get that far, far enough out of the way that it shouldn't interfere with anything. There we go. There's also a vacuum line here. Probably help to disconnect it as well. There's a little check valve right here. Just disconnect it from that part. That separates all that there. So now we can get to this a little bit easier. And a little bit of rat poop back in there still from the last time. Try, to try something and see if this work. Look at that. Put that right back. So it pulls the hood up. Cool. This actually worked pretty good. Okay, so I think that's going to give us enough room to get to it. And I'll bring you down in here so you can see the 5.5 millimeter bolts I'm talking about. That will hopefully separate that. Then we're going to vacuum out back here first. There's a little crevice right there. It's got a bunch of uh, rat stuff in it. down in here see see that little 5.5 millimeter headed bolt right there there's a few of them around the perimeter of that and I think it separates it and you can be able to should be able to pull it off there I don't know for sure but we're gonna find out we're gonna do that together all right that's all the screws the real question is, is that to actually separate it? No. So it looks like the whole thing needs to come out. I don't think that's going to happen today. It goes back behind the uh, firewall here. So it looks like it's one of those things where you got to pull the whole dash out. And it's not really that important right now. <laughs> but at least we discovered that it's not gonna be uh, 
as simple as just removing that top cover. Let's see if I can get you in there and show you what I'm talking about. So if you look down in here, see how this top cover even goes behind this plate right here, which is part of the uh, firewall. So those screws only separate it when the whole box is out of the car. So I couldn't remember, and now I do. I suppose like I looked at my book and discovered that, but it's a little more fun doing it this way, right? So, okay, in order to get that uh, AC box out, we gotta pull the whole dash apart. Well, most of the dash. So this whole area where we did the uh, heater core, that all has to come back out again. But, hey, at least we discovered that, so. That'll be a future project. I'm not quite ready to do that right now. Plus, I don't have the part anyways. So until I get the part, I'm not gonna tear this whole thing apart just to do that. Well, it's been almost a week. It'll be a week tomorrow since we've uh, played around with this. And uh, we got the part in. So we got a brand new AC uh, evaporator core here. And it came from Rock Auto. I was a little worried because when I got the box open, this thing was all taped up like God knows how badly, but this doesn't look like it's ever been out of the box. It's just a, so the box might have been damaged, but it was well packed, so I'm not too concerned about it right now. So we're going to get in here and uh, start tearing that box out, but mostly from the inside. We got to disconnect the hoses here, the heater hose back there. Probably get all the other stuff out of the way again, just so it's, you know, not in the way. And the system's already um, empty because I went to empty it uh, right during, you know, about a week ago and it was already empty. So definitely got a leak somewhere and hopefully that's the problem and not something else like the uh, compressor that's been replaced twice already. But anyways, oh, I'm trying to figure out what that noise was. My wife is cleaning the carpet. But anyways, let's get into this and start tearing it apart. Well, like I said, this thing's already empty, but we're gonna check it just in case. Yeah, there's nothing in it. So definitely uh, lost all this pressure, which is good. That means we don't have to worry about uh, collecting anything out of it because there wasn't anything in it to collect. So let's start off with these two bolts right here to the with both uh, 13s by the looks of it. All right, before I even do that, since we're gonna be pulling the computer out of the way and everything, we're gonna disconnect the battery. All right, that should be good for that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect it from the uh, condenser too. And that bolt for the condenser is a 10 millimeter. Well, you know what? Let's just make it really easy on ourselves. I'm gonna take this entire dryer out too. That way it's completely out of the way. So it's one more 10 millimeter bolt. And then a clamp down here, which is also a 10 millimeter. Now get that piece out. And the dryer gets out of the way now. Okay, so the next thing is going to be the uh, heater hoses. And they're way up inside there. I don't know if you'll be able to see that one or not. These have clamps on them. And I'm going to put a hose clamp or a clamp, uh, like a hose clamp on them to prevent them from leaking all their fluid out. Since that heater core is brand new. So you got these little plastic hose clamps, you just clamp it down with those. So that should prevent some leakage. Let's see if we can get you back in there so you can see where I'm at here. You look back there, there's two hose clamps way back there. I need to come off. Let's see if I can get you. See the kind of orange one and the silver one next to it? Right there and right there. Just won't focus. So those got to be removed and they're a pain in the butt. All right, so I removed the ECU just to get it out of the way. Got the wiring all up out of the way now. You can see down in here, there's a couple bolts. Like right, there's one right there. There's another one coming through from the inside. And there might be another one on top over here, which is being blocked by the 
There's another one right there. So there's a bunch of different bolts, some from the inside, from the outside, that hold that thing in there. So we got to get those all out of there. Still got to disconnect the, hose, the heater hose. And uh, that's, so we're going to do that right now. So I just got to say, I had a pretty good knuckle buster right there. Doesn't look like much. And it's been two days now since that happened when I was working on the Firebird. And uh, yeah, that's a really annoying spot because you don't realize how much you touch and hit with the back of your finger. Just thought I'd share. Let's see if I can get you down in here see if you can see these bolts a little better. So you get the one down there. There's one there. All the ones that go around the top. There's two more all the way up underneath there too. So those two. And I think there's two more on the on the inside that need to come out and the rest come out from the inside of the car. So, so we gotta get those ones out from the back, uh, from the engine bay first, and then we can concentrate on the inside. So there's one way down underneath there, kind of behind the exhaust manifold. So I'm gonna try using extensions and a wobbly bit. See if I can get it out of there. It's really the only one that's kind of blocked. Might be stuck now. Now oh, there it goes. There we go. What do they look like? Big old freaking plastic screw things. Oh, I hit the ground. That's good. Okay, so that's two. So that's all the external screws that hold it in. And we got one vacuum line here too. I to disconnect this one. And that'll come out with the rest of the box. So now we gotta move on to the inside of the car. All right, so I gotta get up in here in the dash area now. Try to get all this out. So let's get the uh, glove box out first. I don't know if y'all remember when I did the heater core, but there's two screws or three screws underneath here. And then the uh, glove box comes out. They're all seven millimeter headed bolts. That'll just come right out. Two plastic clips. I don't know if this one will actually work for this or not. There we go. Put these two little clips here. And that comes out and there's a metal clip on the back that holds it in. Just pop it off usually and making me a liar. It always shoots all the way across the car. So it's this metal clip right here that holds this in. Now I can remove that. Just so you can see, there's screws like this in a few places around here. This one right here. So there's a few of those laying around, going around the bottom here to get that box out. It's been a while since I've done this. I don't think I've ever actually done the the uh, evaporator. Another bolt back there. Hmm. So we want to pull the whole dash out. I think we might have to. In order to do that, we got to pull the console. Get all that stuff out from underneath there. Pull this dash piece out, completely broken. So it looks like that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pull the dash out. We may in turn find out that we could do this without pulling the dash out, but as of right now, this is where we're at. But you see why I gotta pull the dash panel off is because of these screws right here that hold the top of the dash in. Gotta do something about that too, because I don't remember being that loose when I installed it before Jace left. I 
How much is that radio? Come a long way since the CD players and tape players of the old days. Oh. The cable just pulls off. Did you quit trying to eat the plastic? That dick over here. Wanted to eat stuff. Get back. This part where it actually looks like it melted. This is definitely turning into a much bigger job. Kind of figured it might, but gotta have those wishful thinking and hopeful, huh? All right, so the next thing you gotta do is remove this kick panel right here. Sell it in with uh, four screws. I think a clip up here somewhere. Some of the screws are kind of in between the seats, so I gotta use my little cool little screwdriver here. Hope you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. The only one needs to be removed with a small tool. So as far as a little history on this, I've uh, torn a lot of these cars apart, but I never replaced an EVAP uh, core. So I've replaced the entire box or transplanted it from one car to another, but never had to replace the EVAP core. And I think, I'm trying to think of the last car I actually had that had AC, and I never actually hooked it up. <laughs> I always did a, you know, like the uh, AC bypass pulley on my LT1s. So, I don't know. But I've definitely torn these apart a few times. But that's done, that's out of there now. So that gives us access to another bolt up in there too. But behind these vents over here, I don't know how well you can see it or not, but under those vents right there, there's more, there's another bolt that's gonna come out. So we gotta get to those pieces out so too. So you look up in here. So we've already talked about the screws up here that hold the dash, the top of the dash in. So we got like five across the top here, maybe more, I can't remember exactly. And uh, the other bolt that holds it in is that stud right there. So once we remove that nut, then this dash can come out on both sides. So we gotta pull it on that side still, but I maybe ought to do it, I don't know yet. We're gonna pull this side off first. I don't wanna take a chance of breaking it any more than it already is, but, but yeah, we gotta pull that side off there and uh, get it so we can pull that out. And the other thing we have to disconnect because it's attached to the dash as well as your, your uh, airbag. So you just unplug it. So make sure you, something like that, you definitely have 12 volt disconnected. But everything else is not attached to the dash. So these clips right here hold it in when it's in the car. But once you get these clips off, these hangers, then it's no longer attached to the dash. And you should be able to pull the dash out just by tipping it out. So that's what we're gonna do. But we gotta pull the whole driver's side apart, including the steering column. Right, so we got a bunch of stuff we got to pull out of this side now too to get that uh this last bolt for the dash so just gonna speed it up do it quickly All right, so I got it pretty much ready to come out. There's a screw up there that's holding it in right now. There's also two screws down behind the uh, the center console. Those ones back there, like I showed you before. Those are out. Make sure you don't forget to put those grounds back on when you put this all back together. Um, that's reminding myself as well. And uh, this little thing right here, this is the plug for your gauges. And the way you disconnect it is you slide it to one side. So it's usually in. Well, this slide goes back and then slides up in and clips in. That's what holds your gauges, your gauge wiring in. So, uh, as you can see, there's a little mount behind here that's holding the wiring right now. So I'm gonna get behind there and get that out. Plus, I'm gonna drop the steering column and remove it completely, I think. 
and uh, that way it's completely out of the way or at least drop it down to where it's out of the way. So uh, that's what we're gonna do next. All right, we're gonna get the steering column the rest of the way out. I already disconnected the, uh, the shaft from the steering uh, shaft, yeah. So the steering shaft is disconnected. And uh, so we're gonna pull the rest of it out now. All right, there you go. The dash and all the vents are out. <sighs> that was a pain in the butt. Because of all that stupid wiring in there. So now it's just a matter of getting this box out. It shouldn't be too bad. I think there's only like five bolts that hold it in. And uh, for the for that and that's it cable that's gonna be a nightmare to you that all right so now we should be able to get this thing out pretty easily and there's a couple of bolts hidden up underneath there somewhere that we gotta get to and yeah but that's gonna be tomorrow because I'm done for the night all right it is the next day almost noon now because I had to run down to Altus to pick up some prescriptions. So now we gotta get the rest of this box out. And I'm pretty sure there's only like six bolts, maybe not even that many, that hold this thing in. And I think maybe you have to, okay, I see one right back there. And I think there's two down here, three down here, maybe. But either way, we gotta pull this box out. So let's get to it. All right, let's see if we can get this thing out of here. Let's start with the top one. It seems to be like the easiest one to see. So that's what the screws look like. All right, that's four. Now let's see how many I missed. Oh, that come out now. We may have it. There's something over here is holding it. Sure, it seems like there should be something over there. Uh, man, let me get my scope out. All right, so I found the vat, the very last screw. There's another one of these, and it was way down behind the intake and the block. So right dead center in the middle of the firewall, and then a little that little concave area it was in. And yeah, so there was one last screw from the outside. So I do remember the last time I did one of these, the engine was not in the car, so it was probably a little bit easier then. But uh, let's get this thing out the rest of the way. So probably be a lot easier without the carpet and floor mats and all that good stuff in the way too. And there you have it. One AC box. And this I'm still attached. Because probably for the heating resistor or thingy. Alright. I know I got a nice big hole there, so changing plugs would be easy on this now. Yeah, that last bolt was that one right there, right in the middle. Oh, what a stupid place to put it. But I wouldn't expect anything less. Alright. So looks like the only thing we have left to get out is this one screw right here. That's a 5.5 headed. And then the one that holds the two tubes for the heater core. Now this should be able to pop off now, I would think. Let me put you on a stand here. So it's definitely off. I'll take this little panel off, this little vent. All that, and there's still a clip. There you have it. 
God dang, this whole thing's a part of it. Yep, but you don't want to make it easy for you, do they? I'm trying to very carefully remove this seal because it's kind of in the way. One little corner of the side of the tear. There we go. That should be everything out of the way, I hope. Except for the heater core. And that's gonna come out too. How about now? You gonna come apart now? Oh yeah, yeah. Sure will. screws underneath there to hold this in. Oh, there you have it. Completely torn down freaking heater box. Wow. Look at all the leaves and stuff down the side here. It's crazy. So now we can get this out. Where's it attached to it? Ah, right there. Two screws. Well, first things first, let's try. I'm gonna look and see if there's any green stuff. Gotta see if this is off or not or not. That sounded right, didn't it? Um, I don't see nothing green. see that or not you see how the maybe it's just the glue is reflecting I don't know I don't see any leaks but who knows well either way it's up now all right, so we got the old uh, evac out. A little bit different in the uh, way these are made. See this little, these little grooves back here? That's to hold this, which is uh, the tie down or the hold down for it. And that didn't, it doesn't have, the new one doesn't have those slots in it. Um, but yeah, and I don't see a leak either. So this might have just been all for naught. And, uh, you know, put the ultra ultraviolet light on there and I couldn't see nothing. So the only other thing would be either the compressor's bad again or the condenser. And I tried shining the light on the condenser and that I couldn't see nothing, but it's covered up pretty good underneath here. So it's hard to say. It could be leaking from anywhere. But that'll probably be the next thing we look at. On to the next thing after we get this all back together, I guess. I mean, I'll just leave it all out. Who needs heating and air conditioning? Yeah, so as you know, we got this all apart. Um, I got to put the new evaporator core in. Like I said, I couldn't find any leaks. Nothing showed up on the UV light with this one. I'll take that to the light. Oh, it's over there. And it's on. So whatever, whatever it was I smelled inside the car when I drove it last with the AC on, must not have been the uh, R134, but gonna replace it anyway since it's new. Get that uh, repl uh, done. But uh, uh, this video's gone for a while, so we're gonna go ahead and end it here, and I'll do an assembly video separate because we're already over 30 minutes here, I think. I'm just gonna finish up this video on uh, pulling apart the AC in hopes that you know I found a leak with the evaporator core, which I did not, unfortunately, at least not an obvious one. Um, like I said before, the reason why I did it was because I smelled it in the car when I was, ran it the last time. So I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know. But we're gonna replace it anyways. We'll check the condenser next. Hopefully it's not the compressor again because it's already, I've already replaced that three times. Or this was the third one that's been in it. But uh, yeah, so that's what, uh, so we're gonna leave this one. So if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like down there. Leave me a comment, let me know what I can do, what I can do better, and subscribe while you're at it. So until next time, I'll see you later.